All right, boys and girls, this, this is not a shower. This is a foam booth with a water source. Not enough elbow room, not enough. Now this, this is a perfectly good bathtub. But we have kids, we don't have time to take baths. So we're gonna knock all this out and give us one good, beautiful, roomy shower. So without wasting time, let's do a little movie magic. We're gonna take this space and turn it into that. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Let's go. When it comes to taking on any kind of demo work, the three basic tools necessary for the job is a pry bar, a hammer, and a stiff putty knife. You can't go wrong with these tools to take on almost anything. If you have no clue of what to get, I'll link some of my favorite tools in the description for you guys to check out if you'd like. What am I doing? Let's not break our legs, folks. Let's be safe. One thing I did want to mention to you guys, listen, a lot of people go like, oh, I wish I had your skill. I wish I, somebody taught me. Nobody taught me. I don't have any formal training. I was never in trades. What I did do is I broke stuff like this and then I saw how it was made as I was breaking and then I tried recreating it, but slightly better. That's it. So if I can do it, you can do it. There are really no rules about demo work. The only thing that I would advise you is to make sure the plumbing and electrical is turned off to prevent a bigger mess. And from that point on, just start inserting the putty knife or a pry bar and start pulling things off or better yet, hammer it until you can catch some leverage. Just be safe about it and use goggles and gloves. And one thing I'll say is, if you make a bigger mess, well, that's just an opportunity to learn how to fix it. Did you see that white inch and a half PVC pipe running down the wall? Well, it's a vent tube. It's used to allow for all the sewage gases to escape out of the house and to the outside. There's basically one in every bathroom and anything that has a drainage system. It's an absolute must to have a vent tube. And since we don't have a bathtub anymore, we can just get rid of this vent tube, cap it off, and just keep the vent tube for the shower. Easy fix. The shower requires a black two inch drain with a trap. So we are capping off the small drain from the bathtub and rewriting the large black shower drain to sit in the middle of our shower. The trap is required to create a water lock to keep the stinky sewer gases from backflowing into the shower. All of this is super easy. It's essentially like putting together Legos, but also gluing them more permanently. So here's the thing, since I'm going to have both a water rain feature coming from the middle of the ceiling as well as a traditional removable water spray handle coming from the wall, I still had to remove the old water lines because I want the ability to turn the shower on for the water to actually warm up and not freeze me without having to get into the shower. So I would need to run the new water lines from the ceiling instead of the floor to install the regulator by the entrance. All right, boys and girls, a uh, really cool part right now. We're going to be doing the water feature coming down the middle, the waterfall, and then the 45 shower head as well. The way we're going to do it is the PEX piping is going to come running across the, the attic, and then it's going to come into this drop ear. This secures right into the studs, and the PEX piping slides in here, and then this is where the shower head will come in. But in the meantime, we're just going to cap it all off. We don't need to make a, a bigger mess with water except this time. Um, so that's how that's going to run, and then we're going to have another one. So basically, two PEX pipings. More of the story, guys. Super simple. You can do it. I can do it. We can all do it. Just give it a try. What's the worst that can happen? You flood your house. When running the new water lines, I'm using half inch PEX piping connections to a half inch drop ear shark bite connection, which is basically a 90 degree brass elbow that attaches to a two by four via some screws will allow for a shower head to actually screw in when I'm done. Since we're not ready to connect our new shower heads yet, I'm using a half inch galvanized pipe with a cap to temporarily occlude the water line so, well, obviously I don't flood the area. Once all the plumbing was done, I patched up the subflooring and reinforced it with an extra sheet of OSB for added support. Now, speaking of overkill, I, it might be a little overkill to make my shower 10, 12 feet long. So I, to stay a little humble, I only moved the wall two feet to make the shower seven feet long. Now, I know it's silly how we had to tear down a wall just to build it back up two feet further. This was a must since we're going for a bigger shower and not a smaller shower. I mean, we're here anyways, right? The good news is it didn't cost me any more money since I was able to reuse the old studs of the wall. So basically I just relocated it. I patched up the old shower space with new sheets of drywall and turned that area into a small broom or utility closet, depending what you call it. Side note, I do have a video of how I created that space and gave it a secret door. So you should check it out, it's on my channel. I figured while everything's still a mess, I might as well make a little bit bigger mess and add an extra light housing into the shower to brighten things up a bit. I know that if I didn't do this now, I'm sure I would regret it later. 
All right, so this is the water ledge that's gonna be for the shower, and uh, there's gonna be glass coming all the way. There's a couple of methods that I've seen it being done. One method is putting down bricks. Makes sense, 100%, just because you got thin set mortar and all that stuff. Uh, but another guy said what he likes to do is, he's done this for uh, hundreds of houses, he would lay down three two by fours that are pressure treated so they can kind of deal with any kind of moisture there. And then obviously it's all gonna get wrapped with the liner that's inside this pan, but I thought it was pretty brilliant. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put them in here and I'm gonna put some long screws in it and then uh, we'll get the liner going. All right, so let's address the window situation because on my Instagram stories, everybody's asking me, the window, are you gonna keep the window? Yes, I'm gonna keep the window because I want uh, my neighbors to feel like I can provide a service for them, an entertainment, if you will. So yes, we're gonna keep the window. No, I'm not gonna keep the window. We're gonna take the window out. Uh, we do wanna keep the light, that's the thing about it. Uh, I don't wanna block this off because it's gonna look dark in here, even though I put a light fixture in there. And I don't wanna put those small little mirror windows on top, just cause it's like, it doesn't really do that much for you. So I'm gonna put a slightly smaller window uh, and bring it nice and high. So here's what I found. This is a uh, 24 by 36, I believe. And uh, we're gonna move it up to here. So I'm six foot two. Oh, if I can hold it. I'm six foot two. When this is up, you're basically gonna see my neck up. My wife's like five foot five, I think. So even lower. And in case a giant from professional football comes in here, well, you'll see his uh, clavicles. And if that's not nudity for you, I don't know what is. All right, so I'm gonna see if I don't kill myself. Put an 18 foot ladder back there, try to take this window out. Let's do it. Since the second floor window is 16 feet up from the ground and I currently do not own a ladder big enough, I'm gonna get a little creative and frame everything from the inside of the house and secure the window to the frame from the outside of the window opening. Now, since the window is gonna be smaller in size, we're just going to recreate the framework that's needed to secure the window. The certain anatomies of framing includes King studs, jack studs, cripple, and sill plate. Uh, these are simple things, but very important anatomies of framing in order to make sure our window lasts the duration of the rest of this house. That was probably the most impressive thing I've ever done. Installed, removed, installed, and did the siding, well not siding, but the framing of a window. That's talent, they don't teach that in school. Now, of course, later on before the wet weather kicks in, I will rent a ladder long enough and replace the siding along with the window trim from the outside like a normal human being. The shower pan has the most specific rules as well as waterproofing drainage layers that are needed to be followed very carefully. For the sake of this video, later on, I'll put out another video dedicated exclusively to the drainage and the waterproofing steps when building the shower pan. So in the meantime, I will just brush over some of these steps in this video right now. All right, here's a little dilemma, guys. Um, just to show you that I'm not a contractor and I don't know what I'm doing all the time, but I'm always asking the right questions to the right people and not afraid to fail. So here's an example of failure and asking somebody for the right question. Uh, this bench cannot be closer than eight inches away from the glass here. That's for cleaning the glass purposes and stuff like that. So it has to be either A, flush, which I don't want it to be, uh, where meaning the window would have to come out here. It's complicated. Basically, the easiest solution we found out is uh, I'm gonna chop it off right here, and I'm gonna see if I can realign this for the caddy. So, um, only human. So, uh, no point of showing you this, so I'm gonna take this and, and just like that, we're a lot shorter. Not as pretty, but right. I secured two by six scrap pieces to the base to allow for the waterproofing liner to wrap up. This is basically creating a flood zone, so we will secure the liner to this edge. Then I secured the two-piece shower drain with the two-inch drain pipe using adhesive and set the screws in through the subfloor. I used a mortar mix to create the first slope which runs from one inch and slopes down to three-eighths of an inch which is basically flush with the drain. Now, seems to be that some people are using carbon paper barrier before this layer and from my homework on this project, it seems like it's an old school method that's being practiced less and less these days. Next, I laid down the PVC shower liner, folding the edges and securing at the top of the two x six boards to prevent water leaking in case this level floods. 
I removed the top of the two-piece drain, laid a bead of silicone around the ring, creating a gasket, and folded carefully the water liner over it. Here's the tricky part. I used the top piece of the two-piece drain to find the hole, created a small X, and screwed the top piece to the bottom piece, making sure the slits fold down into the drain. Then I found the small divots for the screw holes and secured the top of the drain to the bottom using the provided bolts. I placed small pea gravel or pebbles around the drain for adequate drainage and then began working on the second and final slope which runs from one inch down to half inch just covering the rocks. It's important to note the need for a dry compact when using the mortar mix all while checking the slope to ensure all the water running into the drain. For a cement board, I'm using half inch cement board to cover the walls where the tile will be hung. Then securing the joints using fiberglass cement board tape and thin set. This is basically like taping the joints on drywall. For the shower niche, I bought a pre-made waterproof ditch that would make tiling and waterproofing easier for me. Not to mention save time on such a small section. I found it easier to secure the cement board, cut out the perfect fit for the niche where it could attach directly to the studs with screws and then secured the joints using fiberglass tape just like the cement boards. All right, so when it comes to doing the border here, very important, you have to think of everything in terms of flood line and waterproofing in terms of that. So what I mean by that is everything sloping into the drain, correct? And then on top of it, the cement board, we didn't secure anything below the five inches uh, off the ground here because we have our liner overflowing to the two by sixes. Now, this uh, border here, we can put screws from the outside, totally okay. In fact, this liner secured from the outside here, but we have to take consideration the liner on the inside. We can't just put cement board on the inside here and start screwing in because now we have holes and it's all, you know, it's all gonna flood through. So here's what we're gonna do. We're actually gonna pour the, the concrete over this, or well, it's like a mortar thin set mix, whatever it is. And so to accomplish this, we're gonna set this two by four here. We're gonna take caulk or silicone. I think caulk is a little bit easier to take off. And we're gonna create a watertight seal. Um, and then on this side, we're gonna secure this six inch long or wide uh, cement board. Once it's secured, we're basically gonna have a channel here. Now, this is touching against it, so tile's gonna sit on top of it. We're gonna fill at least a half an inch on top. I'm gonna do an inch. And then at least half an inch on the inside. Again, I'm gonna do an inch and let it sit overnight. And then our border is gonna be done. We'll take the two by four off and we should be good. These are the exact directions that a few tile guys tell me. So we are so far trucking on solid ground. So that's what we're gonna do. Waterproofing folks, waterproofing. Because the cement board would get damaged if the water creeped into it, we needed to waterproof this area and all the joints. I'm using this waterproofing product from Liquid Rubber. I brushed the liquid rubber on all the joints first, then laid the waterproofing membrane over it, and then covered it with more liquid rubber. This ensures all the joints are protected from any kind of potential water thread. So it's very important that you put this waterproofing membrane on any place that you've had uh, the a joint, really. Uh, the idea behind it, I think, is when any of this stuff cracks, which you're assuming it will, um, this will be kind of the waterproofing membrane that will prevent water from getting behind into those little cracks. So um, once you get that on, I'm gonna put a fat slobber of waterproofing liquid rubber here and should be good. It's almost like therapeutic, you know? Once every joint and seam was covered, I rolled three to four heavy coats of waterproofing using a nine inch roller to achieve about a 40 mil thickness as recommended by the manufacturer. For tile, I'm using this three x 12 tile in a vertical layout. From here on out, it's just a lot of patience and repetitive work. If you need a few pointers on laying tile, I made a quick video tutorial about some of the tips, tricks, and tools required when laying tile shower. I'll link that video along with the type of tile used down in the description of this video. So when it comes to doing the windowsill, it's important to keep a slant uh, into the shower. That way when the shower water comes down and you're washing your hair and it splatters here, it doesn't pull up and do all sorts of damage and gunk. What you want to do is slant it in just a little bit, nothing too crazy, um, and then kind of work from there. The next day when the tile was dry, I applied the grout and then let the area dry one more day. Now you might be asking why I'm cutting the hole for the water regulator so last minute. Well, that's because the exact type of water regulator I ordered was on back order and so I couldn't let that slow down the momentum. Besides, 
I'm still able to access the back of the wall where the regulator would be, so mounting won't be an issue. Most prefabricated shower glass panels are sold up to about three feet wide, and since I needed six, I had to special order it from a local glass company. The glass took about five days to be cut and delivered to my door. Now, because I wanted to do the installation myself, I had the guys at the glass company give me a quick tutorial of how to do it right. It starts with mounting the provided brackets onto the glass via the designated slots. Then, bringing the glass to where it will sit and setting the glass onto these clear rubber 8th inch spacers. That way, your glass is not sitting right on the glass where it could chip. I then marked out where the holes for the brackets will go. Once marked, I used a quarter inch tile drill to drill out the holes, vacuum out all the debris from the holes, and secure the special tapered anchors into the holes. I then aligned the glass into position and secured the brackets into the anchors with the provided screws. All that was left was to trim off the eighth inch spacers with a blade and fill all the brackets and all the seams using the waterproofed silicone. One of the last steps in waterproofing, they recommend to take a waterproofing silicone and run a bead down at the bottom of the shower pan to give one more layer of added protection in case the grout cracks and water starts breaking down the materials. The last step in making the shower operational is the shower head and the hardware. I bought this two-piece shower system on Amazon for $300. It includes 16 by 16 overhead rain shower, as well as a detachable handheld sprayer, water regular, and absolutely everything needed to install it. So far, I really like this system and it has great reviews, not to mention some of the name brands out there are selling these systems for like triple the price. I'll link it down in the description as well for you guys to check out if you want. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you're brand new to the channel and you like videos like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button and tap the notification bell. That way you'll be alerted every time I put a video out. If you like this video, make sure you like, comment, and share it with your friends. If you have any questions, write them down in the comment section below. I'd love to answer them. Follow me on social media. I'll put links down in the description below. Tune out this week. We'll see you guys on the next one. See ya. Bye.